As soon as the reunion tour is over, you devote yourself entirely to caring for Ron. You also take on the role as patron of the Motor Neuron Disease Association. And after a heartbreaking struggle, your soulmate finally slips away in 1994, three weeks after your 25th wedding anniversary. And he influenced almost every aspect of your life, didn't he? Pro professionally, matrimonially. Uh, I can't imagine what, what I would have been like as a person if I'd never met Ron. He absolutely completed my life in every single sense. I have some nostalgia from a group who had nine hits in the 60s in just three years. Well, last year, after 25 years apart, the Seekers reformed for some celebration concerts and due literally to overwhelming public demand, they're still together and they're still touring. And here they are with that 1966 chart topper morning time ride. Will you welcome Judith Durham and the Seekers. You know, I'm truly fascinated by the fact that uh, you were apart for 25 years and then just reformed last year. Did you see each other much over the years? We never really did see each other at all. That was for the, reun the reason for the reunion, actually, Gloria. We hadn't been together in the same room until we had a dinner together and soon after that we decided to do perhaps one big concert and that grew into over 100 in Australia and New Zealand and now Barry Clayman Concerts and Paul Dainty Corporation are bringing us back over in March for three very, uh, six big concerts, actually in the major arenas next March. Yeah, it'd be fantastic. I mean, it's extraordinary, the reaction, isn't it? Because here you are thinking, oh, well, we'll have a little 25th reunion, and then all of a sudden the whole thing takes off again. Well, it's lovely because we've found that uh, a whole new generation of fans have been coming along, uh, uh, people that grew up in houses where their, their mums and dads played the music. Uh, and, uh, in fact, we did over 100 concerts last year alone in Australia and New Zealand. 
So it was just sensational. So is the tour then next year going to be the farewell, farewell tour? Or is it going to be like Frank Sinatra and then every few years it'll be another farewell? <laughs> well, we are telling everyone this is the only chance they have to see us, really. It is something very special for the four, for the four of us, too, to be getting together after so long. So it's a big celebration for us, and we know it has been for all the fans because our album's gone right up the charts over here. We're very thrilled about that. Yeah, I think they quite like the fact that you're back, don't you, Alpha? Oh, I think so, yeah. <laughs> I think the Carnival of Hits album's been terrific, and uh, EMI have released a special edition of Georgie Girl as a single to celebrate the fact that we're here and to lead to the concerts next year. So we're having a ball. It's, it's great being back and to have all our friends here with us. They're all singing along out there, weren't you? Yeah. Every yeah, single word. Yeah. Actually, the thing about Morning Time Ride that I like is that everybody's got their own little story to tell, you know, in relation to children or teaching them the words. But yes. that uh, single you were talking about, Georgie Girl, we're going to hear that later in the program. Yeah. But for the moment, thank you to the Seekers. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you very much. Now listen, nearly 30 years ago, a folk group came to Britain with a new hard-hitting sound and style. They rose rapidly in the charts with hits such as A World of Our Own, I'll Never Find Another You, The Carnival Is Over, and sadly they split. And for 25 years, all four found success in their solo endeavours. But the spirit of the Seekers was to loom large in their lives. And this week, they re-released a single, the title song, to the highly successful film, Georgie Girl. Hey there, Georgie Girl, swinging down the street so fancy free. Nobody you meet could ever see the loneliness there. Inside you, hey there, Georgie Girl, why do all the boys just pass you? You just no time, or is it the clothes you wear? You're always window shopping, but never stopping to buy. So shed those downy feathers and fly. A little bit, hey there, Georgie girl. There's another Georgie deep inside. Bring out all the love you hide. It's, it's, it's just like the welcome you're getting everywhere you go in Britain, isn't it, Judith? It's been fantastic. Actually, the concerts we had last April at the Royal Albert Hall were just mm. wonderful. And really, everybody's just been super. We didn't realise we'd get to Scotland, though. Yeah. It's a big thrill to come up here. Oh, we're delighted, delighted, to, to here. delighted to have you. And you haven't changed a bit, any of you. <laughs> <laughs> Athol, who, who came up with the idea to actually reform? Was it just a natural sort of silver uh, an, uh, anniversary thing? I think it was years? something uh, as time had come. We, we sat together and had dinner uh, one night in Melbourne for the first time in, in 20 odd years. And uh, first chance we'd had to just renew the friendship, really. 
and out of it uh, came the fact that uh, the 25th anniversary of our departure musically was imminent and we thought well why not do it again seems like a good idea <laughs> how did you feel Bruce I mean did everybody have the, the exactly the same idea were you as keen as everyone else yes it was a, it was a lovely thing to do uh, it was like uh, the family coming together again and uh, I still remember us getting the first time we sang after all those years in a small studio in Melbourne and I said the sound is there absolutely unmistakable and of course as uh, uh, Judith and Athel mentioned we did a lot of concerts. We did over a hundred concerts in Australia and New Zealand last year and uh, we're coming back here in the new year to do some in uh, Yeah. And the enthusiasm, Keith, is it still there, do you think? Do you, you feel this is it's wonderful to be back or is it only temporary? Oh, what, you mean from you, Art? <laughs> 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 uh, uh, the enthusiasm from all of us is, uh, is just, uh, is just uh, overwhelming, really. We, uh, we get out on stage and we get such a wonderful reaction from the audiences and uh, and our enthusiasm just bubbles over because of that. It's just mm. great. Yeah. Mm. So we're looking forward to playing live in front of all, all those wonderful audiences next March as well. Well, yeah. the, the only problem is we don't have a concert in Scotland as yet. Not do yet. We? I mean, Not this yet. is uh, the only visit to Scotland. We're yeah. working on it. Would you like a concert Scotland. in Scotland? Yeah. 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 I, sh I should jolly well think so too. Going right back to the, the start, you were more, Judith, a folk group, were you, before you sort of hit the pop scene? Was that your thing? Well, when we first arrived in England, actually, we used to come up to Glasgow, I think it was, for a folk um, program, a television program. Yeah. We were very much folk. And then we met up with Tom Springfield uh, about six months after we arrived in England in 1964. And he wrote our first hit and produced our first record, which was I'll Never Find Another mm -hmm. You. Mm -hmm. And that made us a very commercial sound for the first time. But, of course, prior to that, you know, in, in Australia, I'd been classically involved, you know, classical music and also traditional jazz even, before I joined up with the guys. Each of us has a history to tell, pre-seekers, because the mm. guys were in different groups as well yeah. out in Australia, yeah. singing different music. But the Seekers w was an all-male group, Keith, wasn't it? Before yes. Judith joined, you were, you were in, in existence, in mm. fact. Yes, and uh, we'd been going like that for about a year, but uh, the, the fourth uh, male member d decided to uh, opt out and get married, and, uh, and at that stage, we <laughs> yes, that's uh, very wise. And, uh, and at that stage, we, uh, we decided to approach uh, Judith to see whether she was interested. She was very much a rising star in the musical scene in uh, Australia at that time. And uh, Certainly well, luckily for us, yeah, she yeah. said yes. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, as a matter of fact, I said yes because it was a 10-week trip. <laughs> we didn't dream. <laughs> Four years later, we were still here. <laughs> I didn't even pack summer clothes. Can you believe that? <laughs> <laughs> didn't even Judith uh, Arthur mentioned Tom Springfield. He's been an enormous influence in your music, hasn't he? Oh, absolutely fantastic. And it was a great, uh, a great combination in those days because Tom yeah, found the commercial edge to all the music we were playing, you know, the, the folk music, the jazz that, uh, that Judith brought to the group, the beautiful gospel songs and everything else. And he just found that little bit of magic with songs like I'll Never Find Another Year. Mm. Of course, with Georgie Girl, which has now been re-released as a single, a, a re-recording of Georgie Girl, and an old recording. There's great value on the single. That was released this week. Uh, Georgie Girl was really the song that put the Seekers internationally. We'd had hits with the other songs, but that was the one that really yeah. cemented the group around the world. Hey, you've got the video as well, um, Bruce, let me hold this up. Yes, the certainly one do. This yeah. is, uh, um, which is on Seekers show, Live it? in Concert. It's the first time uh, we've ever done a, a video of uh, one of our concerts, and it's, it's really excellent. So that, th these are the songs that are on the, the Carnival of Hits album as well? Absolutely, yes, plus That's a few cool. new ones that people have uh, not heard before. Brilliant. A few little bonuses there. Yeah, it's a wonderful concert. I must say, I listened to uh, you guys on, on radio yesterday. I won't mention the radio station, but I, I could not believe that the sound was just as it was 25, 30 years ago. It was yeah. absolutely... Did anybody else hear it? Was, it was yeah. superb. Yeah. And tonight as well, it's just the seekers are back, and it's mm. great. But are you going to stay back? Well, we're never, we're never, we were never really apart in one sense. I mean, as friends and, uh, and in terms of the spirit that we all had together musically, I mean, we had, we had to stop for a lot of reasons in those days. Uh, we had different directions to pursue. Um, but now that we're back, I, th this is a different scenario now. I mean, our friendship is back in real terms. You know, we're, we're together very closely as friends. And, and that'll never change. Uh, and I think that 
with product like this, uh, the seekers have another dimension to them, you know, videos and CDs. And that's a whole new thing without even sort of going into the studios again. Well, you have a rebirth. I must say you have an enormous number of friends, so at Britain and in Scotland as well. It's, yeah. as well. it's been a delight to have you on the programme. Mm -hmm. I do wish we'd more time. I wish we'd more time for more songs. But Judith, Athol, Bruce, Keith, thank you very much. Indeed. Thank you. I can say is, hey there, the carnival certainly isn't over yet. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Keith Potger, Bruce Woodley, Athel Guy, and Judith Durham, the Seekers. so very much you know we were really just a folk group and we went overseas for a 10-week holiday literally to London in 1964 and we're so proud to think that the the songs and the production of Tom Springfield on our records really seemed to set the ball rolling for the Australian music industry overseas because so many other artists then decided they'd follow in our footsteps and try their luck overseas and of course at that time some other folk artists also were in the charts such as Peter Paul and Mary and Donovan and Dylan and the music papers really didn't know how to categorise us and in the end they decided to call us folk pop. <laughs> Who said dreams don't come true? This is a, Australia's original unplugged group. 
In 93, 94, over 100 sell-out concerts in three countries. Over a quarter of a million paying customers, quadruple platinum album for the Seekers Live in concert, and the family brought together again for the first time in 25 years due to the hard work and diligence of our manager, John Kovac. And finally, the satisfaction of seeing this group honoured here tonight for their contribution to Australian music, both here and around the world. Yeah. We'd like to uh, thank you. We'd like to thank EMI, especially because of the way they stood behind us in the 60s and again in the 90s, a bit of a gap, but we had a great time together. And we're so thrilled tonight with this award, as well as the fact that EMI have told us tonight that they're putting out the anthology collection of every song we ever recorded, plus a few more that we didn't even know about in uh, November, plus the, plus the full film of The World of the Seekers that you saw a clip of tonight, which we're very proud of. And the two awards really bring the Seekers story to a wonderful close for us. Well, we're uh, savouring this moment so much that we'd, uh, we've uh, drawn up a huge list of people to thank. And uh, we'd like to, uh, of course, thank each other. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, we'd also like to thank our uh, family for being so supportive, all our families. And uh, our dear friends at uh, EMI Records uh, in the UK, Rupert Perry, EMI Australia, Paul Martinovich, David Baxter, Craig Braun, Mark Williams, Melissa Temple, uh, the promoters who uh, had such faith in us to uh, back our 25-year reunion tours uh, in Australia, Michael Koppel and Paul Dainty, and in the UK, Barry Clayman, in conjunction with Paul Dainty and Peter Lister Todd. Uh, there were three people who uh, helped us spread the word about the uh, reunion, uh, Megan Tudor and uh, Doris Tyler, and of course, uh, Simon Barnett, who uh, produced our live in concert video. Uh, pop music uh, historian extraordinaire, Graham Simpson, thank you very much. And uh, also our legal eagle, Warren Cross, uh, taking care of business. Thank you very much as well. And of course, none of this would have been possible if it hadn't been for our dear brother, John Kovac. And of course, our legion of loyal fans out there in record land. And thank you very much indeed from all of us. In case you didn't know, the Seekers are back, up there with acts that weren't born when the Melbourne group were at their peak in the 60s. With a multi-million dollar recording contract already signed, Australia's hottest young video directors and CD producers are bringing the band to 90s audiences. Richard Fitzgerald has this exclusive preview of the Seekers' new video and CD single, The Far Shore.
do you feel you're competing with yourselves in a way in terms of expectations of what the public want? No, I don't think so. Not really with ourselves. I think what we're competing with is the different format on radio now. Even the Beatles have a problem there because in England the major stations there didn't want to play their latest track, for instance, because it didn't fit the format of the station. So I think that's probably the biggest thing that we yeah. have to, like every other artist, has to compete with, whether you're going to get heard on the airwaves. With the announcement of the new multi-million dollar recording deal last week, it took the Seekers no time to get back in front of the cameras. Set. Playback. We didn't get around to say the word. Let's hit the rewind on the um, split. Even though you guys have been filmed so many times, is it true that this is actually your first clip? This is the very first clip, yes, because back in the 60s there weren't such things as clips. So uh, we made one thing for the Top of the Pops once, they came and filmed us on location just to use on that program once. But that was it. All the vision that survives is from television specials featuring the band. Just watching the interaction that's been going on, there seems to be a real group dynamic. Uh, can you just describe what that dynamic is? Yes, we were all freezing together out there. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty There's nothing like having a 40 knot gale through, through your hair. Well, we, we just have fun, you know. It's just sometimes very hard not to laugh when you look at each other. I laugh when I look at them. Yes. <laughs> the Seekers signed the largest ever record deal in Australia to an Australian record company. The deal is for a three disc box set as well as two CDs of new material. The bottom line is that if you sell the product, you, you get a royalty rate that we've agreed with BMI, which is the best you can possibly get in the industry. But you've still got to sell the records. The band will start to spend their money on searching through hundreds of songs that will be whittled down to 12, and they're released in late 1997 or early 98. EMI, the company signing the checks, believes there is a growing audience. An estimate is that 30% of your audience, a third of your audience, is under 30. That, uh, that's our observation, isn't yeah. it, June? Oh, it's from uh, over Absolutely. 100 concerts every night, mm. 25 to 30 percent. And interestingly enough, they are more often than not were the people that came backstage to have a chat. Mm. It's a 21-year-old who's actually put the Seekers homepage on the internet, somebody over in England. Yeah. You know?